behind that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Please sit down, please. I want to welcome everyone to the White House. We're very excited to be hosting our third annual Made in America Showcase. It's all about Made in America. We just started this, and this is my third already. And uh, I just went around and saw these incredible companies that make everything from the Thad missiles to beautiful boats. And I said, how would that boat do against the Thad missile, and it wasn't a good answer. <laughs> the boat's gonna have a little problem, but that's okay. But I just want to uh, say the engineering inside, as you know, we have incredible things. I'm going in right now to look. I saw some of it yesterday, incredible things. Made in the USA. We're here today to celebrate and support the most incredible products in the world. And this is just a very representative sampling, because we're making more product here than we ever have. Joining us today are manufacturers from all 50 states, and they are terrific talents, terrific craftsmen, terrific business people. And also a very special thank you to Casey Andrews with Game Day Ironworks in Oklahoma for making this beautiful pres presidential seal. It is a beauty. I think we have it displayed someplace right here. And uh, I specifically said, how much? Because I want to buy it. I don't know if they gave me a good price, but we're going to get it. We'll get it. We'll put it up at the White House. It's beautiful, and so many of their other projects and products are incredible. It was forged from American pride and with America pride, and American craftsmanship, and it was 100% American steel. Our steel industry is doing very well. But while those here today create many different goods, you're also devoted to one of the greatest missions on earth, making the best products from the best materials with the best workers anywhere in the world. Right here in the United States of America, right? Made in America, made in the USA, call it either way, but that's what we're doing. And you know, when I took office, I was told by the previous administration that manufacturing jobs would be disappearing. There was no way. They said, you need a miracle, right? You need a miracle. Well, we have a miracle because we up, we're up 600,000 manufacturing jobs since the election. So it's been an extraordinary resurgence of American manufacturing. We've added more than 6 million jobs since I was elected, including over 1 million jobs in manufacturing, engineering, and construction. As I said, 600,000 jobs in pure manufacturing, and that number is going to go substantially higher. And Japan and other countries are at my absolute request, order, call it whatever you want. They're sending tremendous and building tremendous plants now in the United States. We hadn't had auto plants built in many, many years, and now we're having many in Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Florida in North Carolina, South Carolina, many, many plants are being built and being expanded. And that was not happening. Our auto companies and many companies were leaving the United States. Now they're staying. They have a big disincentive to leave. They're not happy when they leave. When they leave, it's not the same. Last year, we saw the biggest increase in manufacturing jobs in more than 20 years. Under my administration, manufacturing share of total job gains is the largest it's been by any president in over one half a century. And don't forget, the old days, they manufactured, so I'm competing against some pretty tough statistics, and yet it's over 50 years. Unemployment has also reached the lowest rate in our country in over 51 years. In many groups, I have to say, African-American unemployment 
If you look at African American, Asian American, Hispanic American unemployment, it's the lowest it's ever been in the history of our country. Women's unemployment, the lowest it's been in over 70 years. And soon we're going to have the all-time record for women, women's unemployment. And for our farmers, we've taken in tens of billions of dollars in tariffs from China, but China stopped dealing with our farmers. So I asked our great Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, what kind of number are you talking about? What if they left? He said, $16 billion, sir, take it off the table. I said, that's okay. We've taken in much, much more, many times that in tariffs. So I'm going to give the farmers we're going to help them out because they're great patriots. We're going to give them $16 billion that we just did, been approved, been everything, and I approved it. So our farmers didn't lose anything by the fact that China targeted our farmers. They targeted the farmers. They said, you know, President Trump did great with the farmers. The farmers love him and he loves them. So we'll hurt the farmers. Well. The farmers are patriots. I never, I hadn't had one farmer say, please make a fast deal, sir. Please make a fast deal. The biggest beneficiary will be the farmers. But the 16 billion that wasn't spent, we're putting back into the farm and ag system. And the farmers are thrilled, I must tell you that. And we're taking uh, the toughest ever action to confront China's chronic trade abuse. They, uh, we're doing numbers on us for many years. I watched, we've been losing four, five, and even more than that, 100 billion, five, think of it, 500 billion dollars a year to China. That doesn't include intellectual property theft and loss. That doesn't include, they say that's 300 billion dollars. Who knows what that is? A lot of people estimate it, but it's a lot. But they say it's 300 billion, so you add that to 500 billion. So we've been losing $800 billion a year to China. So essentially, we rebuilt China. They've done a great job. I'm not going to take it away. And I don't blame China. I blame our past presidents and our past leaders for allowing a situation like that, so ridiculous, to happen. And it's that way, other than the size of the number, it's that way also for many other countries. Today, I'm pleased to announce that we will begin our Buy American requirements, but even stronger. Currently, a product can be 50% foreign, and it still counts as American-made. Figure that one out. In just a few moments, I will sign an executive order will, that will eventually raise these standards up to 75% and above, so that domestic goods will have to have 75% American and 95% for things such as iron and steel. It's got to be 95%. We have great mines. We produce great ore, great steel, great aluminum, great everything. But we weren't using them. Most of them were closed. In some cases, they blame the environmentalists. Most of them were closed. They're not closed anymore, or they won't be closed very long. The philosophy of my administration is simple. If we can build it, grow it, or make it in the United States, we will. When we choose American-made, Something truly wonderful happens. Our communities thrive and flourish. Our neighborhoods bustle with commerce. Our children dream bigger and bolder. And the bonds of loyalty that unite us as citizens become closer, richer, and deeper than ever before. That's how we carry on the flaming torch of Americanism, as President Warren G. Harding called it. As Harding said, we are forever devoted to safeguard America first, to stabilize America first, to prosper America first, to think of America first, to exalt America first, and to live for and revere America first. You never heard that before. You've been doing this for a long time. I was speaking to a couple of the folks that were responsible right here, Freeman, for this great boat of which they're setting records right now. Records by a lot, not even close. So over the last three years, where's Freeman? Where are you folks? Where are you? Stand up, please. Great job. And they were saying how well they're doing and that they've never heard this kind of talk before, build in America. They didn't hear that. In fact, it was the opposite. They were trying to steal your business and build it overseas, build it in other countries, including China, many others. But that's not what this is all about, and this is 
made right here. Thank you. Congratulate everybody, too, please. So thank you all for showcasing your our inspiring products today. They are absolutely incredible. Thank you for pouring out your heart, your sweat, and soul to make our nation even stronger. Thank you for your unwavering commitment to this magnificent land that we love so much. And I just want to end by saying, may God bless the United States of America. May God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, you have any questions on uh, how well our manufacturing business is doing, press? The press. Wow, that's a lot of press, look. What are you talking about in your tweet about going back to their Well, I don't mention, I didn't mention names, and uh, I didn't do that, but I will tell you, with our country, and I think everybody in this audience, these are great manufacturers, great workers in our audience, too. They brought a lot of their workers here. Uh, if you're not happy here, then you can leave. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. And that's what I say all the time. That's what I said in a tweet, which I guess some people think is controversial. A lot of people love it, by the way. A lot of people love it. But if you're not happy in the U.S., if you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Come back if you want. Don't come back. It's okay, too. But if you're not happy, you can leave. Well, that's just a very racist statement, somebody that would say that. So, Speaker Pelosi said, make America white again. Let me tell you, that's a very racist, that's a very racist statement. I'm surprised she'd say that. John, go ahead. And if these people that I watch in those debates ever got their hands on the United States government, 401ks, the values of your company, everything else that we talk about we're so proud of, it's down the tubes. People will lose their money. They'll lose their wealth. You'll have a crash like you've never seen before. And I'm really good at this stuff. I know what I'm talking about. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Where should they go? The ice raids, the ice raids. Why did it your The ice raids were very successful. People came into our country illegally. Illegally. Many were felons. Many were convicted of crimes. Uh, many, many were taken out on Sunday. You just didn't know about it. In fact, I went to, uh, I spoke to the head of ICE. I spoke to a couple of people. We had many people. It was a very successful day. But you didn't see a lot of it because it was done a lot. You'll speak to them. And I'm not even sure they should be telling you, but it was a lot. And it wouldn't have to be Sunday. We've been doing this. Look, we have been removing MS-13. They're monsters. We've been removing MS-13 by the thousands during my administration. And I tell my people, it's much easier to go the other route. But I say, focus on the criminals. Focus on the people that are killing people, that are causing crime. Focus on them. Much easier just to go to general population. That's easy. But I don't do it the easy way. We're getting tremendous numbers of criminals. And yesterday, it was just reported to me before I walked, as I said, how did that go yesterday? It didn't have to start yesterday. The truth is, it started a number of days before yesterday, but yesterday was very successful. People come into our country illegally, and they go out legally. Every person taken out had papers, and we had court orders. Okay, thank you. Why are you doing this policy? Why the asylum changes, Mr. President? How about getting the Why manufacturers up here? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Bring, come on.